ಶ್ರೀಚೈತನ್ಯಮನೋಭೀಷ್ಟ ಸ್ಥಾಪಿತ ಯೇನ ಭೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪ ಕದಾ ಮಹ್ಯಂ ದಾತಿ ಸ್ವಪದಾಂತಿಕ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪೃಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಿತಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶತಾರಿಣೆ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀಯದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧಾರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಹೃದಯ ಪ್ರೇರಣೆಯ ಪ್ರವರ್ತಿಹಂ ವರಾಕೋಪಿ ತಸ ಹರೇ ಪದಕಮಲ ವಂದೇ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವಸ್ಯಾಂಚಾಕಲ್ಪತರುಭ್ಯಶ್ಚ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯ ಪತಿ ಪಾವನೆಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕಿಂಕುಲಶೇಖರ has glorified shri krishna so beautifully by saying dara vara kar varasuta o krishna you are the best so krishna as why am i the best dara vara kar varasuta your wife is the daughter of the ocean sindhu kanyapate hmm? which means the understanding is from the churning of the milk ocean lakshmi appeared or another way to understand is lakshmi in the form of pearls lives in the oyster found in the bed of the ocean so the ocean is the father and lakshmi is the daughter o krishna your wife is the daughter of the ocean which means you have married the goddess of fortune so you have the best wife and te tanujo virinchi and you have the best son because from your navel comes the lotus and from the lotus sprouts the creator of the whole creation brahma imagine having a son who is the creator of the whole universe that's brahma and that's krishna's son so kulashekara says you have the best wife in the form of lakshmi you have the best son in the form of brahma and stota vedas and who are your fans on the four sides you have the four vedas who are fanning you as your fans which means they are constantly glorifying you people like to have fans in this world but they are also the celebrities are also mere mortal and the fans are also mere mortal but krishna is so great that the four vedas who are eternal they from four sides they fan the supreme lord with glorification so who is the wife for the supreme lord goddess of fortune lakshmi who is the son the creator of the whole creation brahma who are the fans the the ones who praise the four vedas stota vedas tavas sura gana vritya varga and who are the personal servants 330 million demigods <laughs> it's quite an aristocratic position the supreme lord is in indra chandra Uh, all the great controllers surya agni vayu the panch mahabhutas they are all servants of shri hari and the vedas are glorifying him aham adischa madhyam cha bhutanam anta eva cha krishna says in the gita aham atma guna kesha sarva bhuta shayasthita what comes out of that aham adischa madhyam cha bhutanam anta eva cha krishna says in the gita that i am in the middle but not just the middle and the beginning and also the end of everything vede ramayane chaiva purane bharate tatha adau ante cha madhye cha hari sarvatra giyate hari gets glorified in the beginning middle and end 
of the four Vedas, the Puranas, the Itihasas, the Upanishads, the Mahabharata, the Ramayana. What a position to have. <laughs> your wife is the goddess of fortune. Your son Brahma is the first being who is the creator of the creation. The four Vedas, which are the ultimate source of authority, they are your fans. All the controllers in this world are your personal servants. Dara vara karavara suta te tanujo virinchi stota vedas tava suragana bhritya vargaha. And now when you shower mercy on someone, prasadaha, what happens? Mukti. That living entity gets freed from the bondage of illusion of repeated birth and death. And that's your prasad. That's your mercy. When someone in this world gives prasad or some kind benediction, they will give a, you know, a down jacket or something. Uh, they'll give a dhoti or a kurta or a you know, fleece jacket or whatever. That's all. But whatever they give keeps us in illusion. It's like when someone is imprisoned in the jail. The best gift that the person maximum gets is maybe an extra shaving foam or an extra body wash. Right? That's, that's the best he gets. But imagine if the jailer comes and says, well... Today is your birthday, I want to release you from this prison. Well, that's the actual gift. So every benediction that we get in this world, it's like we continue to live in the prison house, but the gifts that we receive are like shaving foam and body wash and things which keep us comfortable in the prison. But when Sri Krishna showers mercy, mukti, he can liberate one from repeated birth and death. And what if when he has to show magic, what kind of magic can we show? Maybe some card tricks? Yeah? Or what's the best we can? I remember in our childhood, the best magic that we were taught is to show how the fingers switch. You remember? Did you see? How is that possible? And my father would impress me with that trick. And I would think, how is it even possible? Like he would take his fingers this way, where this finger is shorter and this is the longer one, and he would go like this and flip it very quickly with these two. And I said, did you see? Now the shorter one comes to the left and the longer one. I'm like, what just happened? <laughs> you know, that's the kind of magic that <laughs> we see in this world, or maybe like a street magic or a card trick, or that's it. Disappearing, may, taking a rabbit out of a hat or something. But when the Lord wants to show magic, muktir maya jagadavikalam, he shows the illusion where there is no joy and everyone for all times to come believes that there is joy. <laughs> and who is his mother? Tavaki Devakite. The most merciful mother who even after losing so many babies continued to pray for Kamsa. Oh Krishna, that's your mother. And the best friend you can ask for Gandhi Dhari Arjun, the son of Indra, who could conquer the whole Kaurava army in one day. Such a powerful fighter. Kulashekara, after counting all these, as we say, count your blessings, he's counting the blessings on the Lord. Right? And then at the end he says, Tatva Anyam Jane. I don't know anyone apart from you, my Lord, because you're so wonderful. What else can I speak about you? Everything about you is so wonderful. Ascharyam, Adbutam. It's phenomenally astounding. How great can someone be? <laughs> Isn't it amazing that the whole cosmic creation, which is so beautiful, we take so many flights to reach from one place to another, and but we still continue to be in one kind of one place, you know, just going from one continent to another, maybe. But all of that and beyond was shown on a chariot to Arjun. Imagine Krishna's expanding this way and the feet are still on the chariot. Arjun's seeing the demigods, he's seeing the demons, he's seeing the time factor, he's seeing the waterfalls, the mountains, the ocean, the stars, the cosmic creation. But still the feet of the Lord are still on that chariot. It's not that he's exploding this way, he's just like a banyan tree. And what's even more amazing, he could encapsulate all of that in this small amount. To Mother Yashoda. How great is the Supreme Lord? It's Ashcharyam, it's Adbhutam. 
When we think about how great he is, many times just by hearing these stories again and again, we think, yeah, I mean, I've heard this before. But if you actually just pause and think how amazing that is, what did I just say? Dancing on the hoods of the slippery heads of Kalia? Now, people like me can't even dance on a straight floor. Now, what if that floor starts to move? And now what if it starts to slip and move? And what if it's cupped, slippery and moving and poisonous at the same time <laughs> and unlimited and disconnected? It's almost like he has to play a game jumping from one hood to another. And the Lord does it, not fearfully. <laughs> What's going to happen to me? Not like this, right? It's graceful. He's dancing. He's holding his dhoti. He has the mudras and he has the right gestures and the facial expressions. In South India, there's a whole, you know, Kalinga Nartanam. There's a whole dance based on Krishna's dance on the hoods of the Kaliya snake. It was so graceful that there's a whole classical performance, right? How amazing. Rukmini is counting these qualities. And she says, Krishna, how amazing are you? Mahati Kulashila Rupa. Kula, family lineage. What were some examples we gave for that? Anyone remembers? Krishna comes in a family lineage. Shibi Chakravarti. What else do we remember? Devaki, Mother Devaki, right? And there's so many more. This is the Chandravamsha. Prabhupada in, Shila, in Srimad Bhagavatam in one purport writes. I was reading this purport last evening. I wanted to find more information on Krishna's moon dynasty, Luna dynasty. So I found a purport of Srila Prabhupada, where Srila Prabhupada writes, the moon dynasty is so exalted that at one point, there were 10,000 members who became brahmacharis. That dynasty is so exalted, Prabhupada writes in a purport, and I can share the reference for those who are interested. Prabhupada writes, Krishna's lunar dynasty is so exalted that at one point, 10,000 members became brahmacharis. <laughs> also, another example that we can quote is Maharaj Pururava. Right? Now, how many of us have heard of Maharaj Pururava in the Bhagavatam? Okay. So, Pururava many times gets associated to getting attracted to Urvashi, right? So many times when we say Krishna is in the same lunar dynasty as great personalities like Maharaj Pururava, we're like, oh no, not great personalities. Pururava got attracted to Urvashi. That's the, that's the only thing we know about him. Imagine, Pururava would never imagine that thousands and thousands of years later in, in a place called Iskon of Round Rock, we will be sitting and when we think of his name, oh, he's the one who got attracted to Urvashi. No, that's not the only thing he did in life. <laughs> yeah. One time when Sanyasi was giving class and in the Q&A one boy asked him a question. He said, uh, what happened to uh, Dhruva Maharaj or something like that? And the Sanyasi said, oh, he went straight to Vaikuntha. And the boy frowned. Bus? <laughs> Only to Vaikuntha? We get so used to talking about Goloka Brindavan, Goloka Brindavan, Goloka Brindavan. The sannyasi was sincerely trying to explain Dhruva Maharaj was so austere that he went straight to Vaikuntha and the boy said, Bas? As if uh, Vaikuntha was like the next door neighbor. <laughs> Vaikuntha is a very exalted place. Who can go there? Katham Vishnu Padam Proktam. Shastra says it's the most difficult thing to do to actually reach Vaikuntha. So many times, because of over-familiarity, like we know Goloka Vrindavan, so we kind of beat every other dham. Right? We say Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is merciful, so nobody else is merciful. We don't get to hear so much about the mercy of other incarnations. So similarly, we don't hear so much about Pururava's greatness. That every time we hear Pururava, oh, Urvashi. But that's not the only thing. Like Ajamil, for example. Nobody remembers all the good yajnas that he performed. Ajamil, oh, he fell down. That's the, that's the only thing he did in life. <laughs> yeah. 
So Maharaj Pururava, just to bring the context, he was born in the Lunar Dynasty and he was so great and so capable that Urvashi from heaven heard of his qualities and came down to earth searching for him. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being so great that Urvashi, now there's a backstory to Urvashi. Naranarayan Rishi, was the incarnation of Krishna and Arjuna ultimately. Naranarayan Rishi were meditating and Apsaras were sent to break his meditation, thinking that, oh, he's going to be the next Indra. <laughs> Indra feels everyone who's chanting the holy name is going to become the next Indra. <laughs> There's actually, I'm repeating Shastra, so I'll just say it. There's an example given um, in Tulsi Ramayan. Narad Muni starts to meditate and Indra feels, oh, Narada wants to become the next Indra. Now, Narada is dancing in Vaikuntha, right? Why does he want to become the next Indra? But he just sits to meditate and Indra feels, quote unquote, insecure to teach us a lesson, of course. All glories to Indra Bhagavan. He doesn't feel insecure, but he's teaching us a lesson. So he sends some Apsaras down. And the Apsaras are dancing with Cupid and they're playing some ball games and some showing some flags and festoons to attract his attention. And Narad Muni is just undisturbed. Indra is getting even more insecure. And at the end of it all, they all surrender to Narad Muni. Narad Muni says, I forgive you, go back to Indra now. At that point, Narada tells Indra, Look, there's a saying, says Narad Muni, there's a saying. When a lion comes, dogs hide their bone. The dogs try to hide the bone, thinking that the lion wants the bone. Narad Muni said, I am like the lion, you're behaving like a dog. You think I need your bone, the position? <laughs> the Lord who gave you that position, I worship his abode. So in this mood, Naranarayan Rishi. Naranarayan Rishi were meditating. And when Apsaras were sent to break their meditation, they were undisturbed. At the end of it, Naranarayan Rishi said, these Apsaras are so weak-willed. What can they do? Instead, I'll give you a powerful Apsara. Naranarayan Rishi, on the power of his meditation, created Urvashi and gifted Indra. Said, you don't have good Apsaras in your abode to attract. I'll give you a good one. <laughs> he created Urvashi. So that's, that, that, therefore, Urvashi is the most beautiful and most attractive dancer and, you know, Apsara in Indra's abode. That Urvashi heard the glories of King Pururava, who was the king of earth, and she got attracted and came down. So imagine if that is how great Pururava is. Rukmini Devi is saying, my situation is like that Urvashi, my lord. You are like that Pururava in this Luna dynasty. Kula Sheila Rupa, your dynasty is such that history repeats itself. Please accept me. <laughs> so with every word and a history behind that word, Rukmini is expressing her heartfelt desire. Also, in the Luna dynasty, there was another king by the name Maharaj Nahusha. Huh? How many of us have heard of Maharaj Nahusha? Yeah, more famous than Pururava. So Mah Maharaj Nahusha, he was the king on earth and there was no Indra in heaven. So the demigods thought, we don't have an Indra, we should have an Indra. Whom should we select as Indra? Nahusha seems to be the most advanced. So the demigods come on earth and request Nahusha, can you become Indra in heaven? And Nahusha ascends to heaven with the demigods and becomes Indra. And he is from Chandravamsha. So imagine Chandravamsha has Shivi Chakravarti, Chandravamsha has Pururava, Chandravamsha has Nahusha Maharaj, Chandravamsha has 10,000 Brahmacharis, Chandravamsha has a compassionate mother like Devaki, and what to speak of Vasudev Maharaj. Vasudev Maharaj is so advanced. 
One name of Vasudev is Anaka Dunduvi. Let's repeat. Again. Now Anaka Dunduvi are names of instruments. Dunduvi. Nagade ki tarah. So Anaka Dunduvi, the trumpet and the drum. Anaka and Dunduvi. Like this. Krishna has sound effects throughout. <laughs> so Anaka and Dunduvi. So it's described when Vasudev Maharaj appeared, he was given the name Anaka Dunduvi. Why? Because the demigods started playing the trumpet and playing on the drum. Ha, ah, there appears Vasudev. Very soon Krishna is going to appear. So Krishna's father Vasudev is called Anaka Dunduvi because demigods celebrated his appearance. That if he appears, very soon the Supreme Lord is appearing. How amazing. Can you imagine how truthful and great Vasudeva Maharaj is that he could convince someone as wicked and envious as Kamsa on the power of truth? Kamsa was about to butcher and behead Vasudeva's wife on the day of his marriage. And there is Vasudeva pleading and begging, I will give you every son born to me. And not just a fake, you know, blank fire. It wasn't just a fake bullet. You know, during Diwali, you can have kids in India go with... It's only sound, no bullets. That's called, that's called a blank fire. There's only sound, but there's no bullet. Kids play with these uh, firecrackers. So Vasudev Maharaj never gave blank fires. He kept his word. He told Kamsa, I'll give you every son that's born to me. And on the birth of the first child, Vasudev becomes a father. He takes the child straight to Kamsa. And Kamsa is so touched. How can you give your own child in the hands of a murderer? No, take back this child. Vasudev, you're so truthful. Rukmini Devi is saying, if the father is Devaki, uh, if the mother is Devaki and the father is Vasudev, imagine the child carrying the mother's tolerance and the father's truthfulness. Rukmini Devi is saying, now please keep the truth. What truth? Kaunteya pratijani he name bhakta pranashyati. In the Gita, you said, I will always protect my devotees. Rukmini says, I am a devotee here. Oh, my dear Lord, Kula, on the basis of your family lineage, please keep the truth. You are the son of Devaki and Vasudev. Please help me. How much, how much can be said with every word of Srimad Bhagavatam? Just with the connection to the lineage, Volumes, rivers and rivers of meanings. Prabhupada writes in one purport. Truth spoken concisely. What is that word? Who can, who can tell me? Prabhupada writes in the purport. Something, there's a word, specific word. Prabhupada says, when... What's that? Eloquence, that's the word. <laughs> <laughs> Prabhupada says... Eloquence, true eloquence means truth spoken concisely. Eloquence, to be eloquent. Many times we say, oh, he's an eloquent speaker. That means when truth is spoken concisely. <laughs> so, Srimad Bhagavatam is like that, very eloquent. There's so much written and so little. So that's Kula regarding Krishna's qualities. Is everyone able to remember Krishna and the greatness of his virtues with every word of Srimad Bhagavatam? So this Kula. Now Shila. We were talking about Krishna's Shila. What else can we remember regarding his? What are some examples we spoke about his Shila? Who remembers? Muchakunda Maharaj. When Muchakunda Maharaj asked Krishna, who are you? Krishna said, you don't know who I am? I am Satyam Param Dhimahi. Krishna didn't go like that. He just said, I am the son of Vasudev. My name is Vasudev. And it's quite interesting. Muchukunda gave so many options. He never said, are you God? He said, I think you are Surya Dev. You may be Agni. Or maybe you are Chandra. Maybe you are Indra. Krishna didn't say, <laughs> He didn't start off like that. Sometimes when we get that opportunity, have you seen opportunities like that? People start off with their visiting card. 
They keep their visiting cards ready only for an opportunity and sometimes they create the opportunity and then give it. <laughs> oh, you didn't come to the temple? Yeah, I was very busy. You know, I am the managing director of the company and I keep very busy even on Sunday evenings. <laughs> right? Prabhu, you are not playing Murudanga? Yeah, my hand's hurting. Actually, I just got an Apple watch on my left hand. So, <laughs> so I can't... <laughs> You know, so I can't play the murder. <laughs> but Krishna wasn't like this. <laughs> As if the Apple Watch is all that decides whether you can play the boom boom beats on the murdanga, right? <laughs> so we start off by glorifying ourselves. And actually that's an interesting story there. Yayati Maharaj. How many of us have heard of Yayati Maharaj? Oh as popular as Nahusha. <laughs> so Yayati Maharaj once went to heaven and he was very famous. Now everyone knows Yayati from the ninth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, right? So Yayati Maharaj was very glorious. He goes to heaven. Now everybody knows Yayati including Indra. But just to have little fun, Indra looks at Yayati in heaven. He says, Who are you and what are you doing here? What do you think Yayati would say? He said, you're asking me who I am? Why don't you ask the demigods? Everybody in heaven knows me except you. And you don't know who I am? And then Yayati goes on a rampage, describing pages after pages of the yajnas he has performed and how many, you know, like, so many pious activities, philanthropic activities and revolutionary activities that he has done. And as he's speaking, you can see his piety is getting destroyed. As he continues to glorify himself, the pious deeds that he has amassed over so many lifetimes all slowly start getting destroyed. And at one point, he just falls back to earth because of loss of punya. But fortunately, his sons are performing yajna here on earth. So Yayati goes almost falling into that fire kund from heaven. It's so hilarious. Imagine you go up to heaven and everyone knows you and Indra knows you and he's playing a trink trick and he's asking who you are and you continue glorifying yourself in heaven. What did you do in heaven? I spent 10 minutes. What did you do there? Spoke about myself. <laughs> and then what happened? I came back. <laughs> he fell straight into the fire of the Yajna Kund that his sons were performing Yajna. But fortunately at that point, the sons who were performing the Yajna, they said, Oh dear Vishnu, all the credit that we have accumulated through our Yajna, may it go back to our father. <laughs> Went back to heaven. So this is heaven. It's almost like getting into an elevator and sometimes you're on the 15th floor and sometimes Trine Punya Marte Lokam Vishanti, you come back. Right? So this is what happens when we speak about ourselves. So it's always best that we don't speak about ourselves. One time in interesting true story, how many of us have heard of Swarup Damodar Prabhu, the uh, famous singer? Yeah, everyone's heard of his Vaishnav songs. Yeah? We grew up hearing his Brahma Samhita and Tulsi Arti. So one time, His Holiness Radhanath Maharaj who is the guru of Swarup Damodar Prabhu, was sitting with one of his godbrothers. Now the godbrother didn't know Swarup Damodar Prabhu's guru was Srila Radhanath Maharaj. So Srila Radhanath Maharaj was sitting with his godbrother and the godbrother told Radhanath Maharaj, Maharaj, there's this devotee called Swarup Damodar Prabhu and he sings such sweet bhajans, you should hear them. <laughs> and Maharaj said, yes, he certainly sings so sweetly and uh, I think he's also a very good devotee. So this godbrother didn't know the connection, of course. Later he got to know, well, Swarup Damodar Prabhu is an initiated disciple of Radhanath Maharaj. So he came back to Radhanath Maharaj and said, Maharaj, you, you never told me he's your disciple. Maharaj said, he is not my disciple. He considers me as his guru. <laughs> because how Maharaj was feeling... This would be breach of etiquette to tell, yeah, of course, Swarup Damodar, he is my disciple. You know? Doesn't, Vaishnava etiquette is not about. So Maharaj said, yes, he sings so beautifully and he's also a wonderful Vaishnava. 
So this teaches us that even when there's the most sweetest, juicy, nectarian, ambrosial, slippery opportunity to glorify oneself. To hold on and not do it is actual Vaishnav culture. And Krishna does that over and over and over and over again. So this is quite an important lesson. Sheila, character means we never put anyone down and, when, and we never place ourselves above. Any other examples of Sheila that we saw? During the Rajasuya Yajna, that's a good one. Krishna was actually picking up the plates of the visitors and he was washing the lotus feet of the brahmanas, the guests. This is Sheila. This is perfect character. Think of Sri Ramachandra who accepted the reversal as if nothing happened. Hmm? Think about Krishna to the Pandavas. What wonderful character. It's described, Sarathya parashada sevana sakya dautya virasananu gamanastavana pranaman snigdheshu pandushu jagat pranatim cha vishnu bhaktim kuruti nripatish charanaravinde. The 16th chapter of the first canto Srimad Bhagavatam describes how much love Krishna had for the Pandavas. Even Brihad Bhagavatamrita Srila Sanatana Goswami writes the position of Maharaj Yudhishthir in, in, the, in Narada Muni's search for the best devotee. Bhagavatam describes Krishna loved the Pandavas so much that Sarathya, he was ready to become the chariot driver for Arjun. Now in this world, you just catch any multi-millionaire and tell him, can you become my chauffeur? I have a car and you become my chauffeur and my car will be a chauffeur-driven car. And who is the driver of the car? A multi-millionaire. He would never agree to it because he himself has so many chauffeurs for him. And here, Krishna is ready to park his chariot and turn right and turn left and march ahead and also turn back and give some advice in the form of the Gita. So accessible. Sarathya. Parishada. He would sit and honor Prasadam with the Pandavas. Sevana. He would sometimes carry water pots for them. Sakya. He was their friend. Dautya. Krishna was sent as the peace messenger between the two camps. Can you imagine? God mediating between two camps in the same family. Virasana. Krishna carried a sword and stood outside the tent of Yudhishthir Maharaj at night. Yudhishthir Maharaj and the Pandavas were asleep and Krishna would stand with his weapons to protect. Anugamana, as soon as Krishna woke up, he would offer his obeisances to Yudhishthir Maharaj's lotus feet. It is there in the pages of Mahabharat. You can read. Krishna would offer obeisances and touch with his right hand the lotus feet of Yudhishthir Maharaj to his head and offer prayers. And to Bhim and Arjun, he would offer an embrace. And to Nakul and Sahadev, he would give blessings and accept their obeisances. And who is this? Jagat Pranatim Che Vishnu, whom the whole world bows down as Vishnu. That Vishnu is busy serving the Pandavas. This is Sheila. <laughs> Where the person doesn't make the other person feel the difference in their position. Hmm? Rupa, we spoke a whole session on that, so we won't elaborate further. Although there's so much more, but we'll anyway, we'll just say little. <laughs> the form of the Lord, it's so attractive. Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami Pad, he mentions Krishna's arms are like pestles. You know pestles? For crushing rice and things like that? Yeah for crushing grains, that's pestle. So Krishna's arms are like pestles, which crush the grain like demons, or called the battlefield. At the same time, Krishna's arms are like snakes. Hmm? Srimad Bhagavatam describes Krishna's arms are like snakes. Now why snake? Because if you see, the snakes have a very thick body, but then they taper towards the end and in the beginning. So they have a thick body in the center, but they taper on the sides. So Krishna's arms are thick, but then they taper down towards the fingers. And they are dark like the snake, and they're smooth and shiny and effulgent like the snake, 
at the same time cold like the snake anybody who's feeling the heat of distress or the heat of separation can get lot of um, rejuvenating coolness from the embrace of krishna at the same time it is described with with respect to his friends the gopas krishna would hide behind trees and many times as the friends are walking through the forest krishna would jump from behind trees and embrace them by force and sometimes close their eyes and ask the friends can you guess who this is and they would touch and they would say this is my shamsundar so just like you can see snakes live off trees and when a traveler passes through a forest the the snake can fall on them any time similarly krishna is hiding in the behind the trees and the forests of brindavan <coughs> and his arms are like the snakes they can catch anyone any of his friends and at the same time you know the snake it can strangulate right it can tightly hug and that's krishna if krishna holds on to his devotee even if the devotee wants to let go of the embrace krishna won't katva mukunda mahati kula shi rupa vidya how knowledgeable is the lord vishwanath chakravarti thakur says krishna as the child so innocent he never knew what uh, he never knew the concept of echoes so he would loudly scream deep into the forest hey you hey you hey you hey you and krishna would think there's somebody sitting in the forest speaking that back at him and he would say it once and it would come back three times and vishwanath chakravarti thakur says krishna would shout don't you know i am the son of nanda maharaj you're such a coward you're sitting behind the woods and screaming at me if you come in front of me i will knock the teeth of your mouth and then all of that comes out again and then the echo says don't you know i am the real son of nanda maharaj and and krishna starts to cry thinking that actually that's true how beautiful it's called pratishwanan where he would speak and vishwanath chakravarti even elaborates that so amazing shila vishwanath chakravarti thakur ki jai and at the same time the way krishna speaks to the birds of brindavan netrahin surdas ji a very great brajwasi poet disciple of shripad ballabhacharya he writes krishna when you sing the cuckoo birds get shy the cuckoo birds who are known for their singing and the peacocks who are known for their dancing krishna when you sing and dance they hide in the bushes thinking oh we are so pathetic in our art that krishna is actually teaching us the actual way to do it so krishna's friends they nudge krishna says stop embarrassing the peacocks and the cuckoos come on let's just continue to play let them live their life why you want to trouble them and krishna says okay and then he continues his way and they come out and they start cooing again vivida adbhuta bhashavit how many languages rupa goswami writes in bhakti rasamrita sindhu krishna can speak so many languages he can speak every language of every species with the specific dialects so krishna can speak all languages krishna even speaks the language of silence as the super soul how beautiful doesn't intervene with our free will quite fascinating the great poet kalidas he was known for his metaphors kalidas when he would write his sanskrit poetry he was unparalleled as far as metaphorical presentation is concerned like for example as sweet as a cuckoo dancing like the peacock as fast as lightning as light as feather things like that hmm? he uses it so wonderfully in sanskrit metaphors are called as upama not upma <laughs> not the breakfast upma but upama right so kalidas is known for his upama for his metaphors and another sanskrit poet called bharavi 
He is known for his artha gauravam, for his depth in philosophical understanding. When he writes poetry, it's deep philosophical depth. It's filled with uh, philosophical depth. So what is Kalidas known for? Metaphors. What is Bharavi known for? His philosophical depth. Hmm? There was another Sanskrit poet called Dandi. What's his name? And Dandi was known for Padalalityam. Padalalityam means the, the best, choicest use of words. So we spoke about three poets and you may ask why. Because Kalidas is known for his metaphors. Bharavi is known for the depth in his presentation. Dandi is known for the articulate usage of flowery words. But Rupa Goswami? Upama Kalidasasya Bharave Artha Gauravam Dandina Padalalityam Rupe Santi Trayoguna Jeeva Goswami Pad writes Although Kalidas is known for this and Bharavi is known for this and Dandi is known for this my Rupa Goswami's poetry has all three. So if that is Rupa Goswami think about Krishna what kind of vidya does he have? 64 days, 64 transcendental arts, and not just that, when he comes as Ramachandra, he's learning from Vashishta and Vishwamitra. When he comes as Krishna, he's learning from Bhagori Rishi and Sandipani Muni. And when he comes as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's learning from Ishwara Puripad. And Ishwara Puri says, how can I teach you? Mahaprabhu whispers in his ear, dear servant, I instruct you to be my guru. And Ishwara Puri, as the eternal servant, agrees to become the guru of the Lord. Vidya. Katva Mukunda Mahati Kula Shila Rupa Vidya Vaya. What did we speak about Krishna's age? Navayovanam. He's always fresh. You will never see a single picture of Krishna having spondylitis. Back pain, neck belt. Imagine Krishna speaking Bhagavad Gita and he's like this. That'll be really funny, right? <laughs> it's going to be really funny. <laughs> or let's say Krishna is smiling in one of the pictures speaking Bhagavad Gita and he has a broken tooth. <laughs> That'll be really funny. Huh? That'll be really funny because there's no painting, no record of the Lord getting old, getting diseased, getting crippled. That one story of Krishna having a headache, that's just to show that the glories of the love of the gopis is so high. Not that the, the aim of that story is not to show that Krishna had a headache. It is to show that if he has a headache, the gopis are ready to go to hell. They would never go, but they are ready to go to relieve Krishna of that headache. Right? The famous story that Prabhupada says about Krishna having a headache. <laughs> We spoke of the Sudharma assembly. Who remembers the story? We said something of the Sudharma assembly. Yes. What was the speciality of the Sudharma assembly? If you enter in there, your age increases, right? Expands. Freezes. Time freezes. That's right. As soon as we enter, no hunger, no sleep, no thirst, and age stops. And Krishna who sits there, Adhyam Purana Purusham Navayovanamcha. He is eternally ever fresh. He is as fresh as the fresh butter that he has stolen all his life in Vrindavan. <laughs> There's a saying that you are what you eat. So, jaisa an, vaisa man in Hindi, right? So, if you've been eating soft butter, what do you think Krishna's heart would be like? Soft butter, right? So, Sudharma assembly, he's ever fresh, he's ever young. And the cliffhanger, you remember from last class? was the point of Dravina, wealth. Where we spoke of a story to start with. That was Krishna flying on top of Garuda to kill oh, okay, Bhaumasura, that's right, yeah. <laughs> Bhaumasura. So Bhauma was the son of the Supreme Lord but with association with a demon called Mura he became an Asura. And he was living in a city called Prakjotishpur, which was guarded by walls, which were all filled with electric wires. And then 
after that all filled with water ponds with man eating crocodiles and mura was guarding gu he was guarding the whole place with 10 sons of homa but krishna on the top of garuda flew through everything with his disc as rishi pointed out as i said krishna was on the back of garuda and rishi went which means he used the sudarshan chakra very nice good job very nice it's very inspiring thank you krishna used his sudarshan chakra he cut through everything he used his club smashed mura got the name murari from that past time and the description in the krishna book is beautiful please if you haven't read that chapter please read it in the krishna book find it in the index read it tonight it's amazing what i said is you know nowhere close to the beautiful description of the krishna book it's very very nice so many details there so there finally krishna destroys mura destroys all the army destroys bhauma releases all the queens the princesses who have been kept captives and krishna says now you can go back to your father's house they said now they won't accept us because bhauma has held us by the hand and imprisoned in vedic culture if a man touches another woman she won't be accepted any longer so krishna even if we go we won't be accepted krishna said so what do you want me to do they said you know can you marry us krishna was thinking okay to save all of you from social disrespect and dishonor i am ready krishna married 16000 queens out of compassion and it's not that he kept all of them in like a you know in a thatched hut or something you know in a outhouse or something you know krishna kept them in very beautiful golden palaces he kept one palace each for each one of his wives 10 sons and one daughter for each and krishna was present with each one of them gave them lots of presents and gifts and gold coins and ornaments and clothes and food and servants and krishna lifted them from being jail captives to being the queens of dwarka now this was the cliffhanger can you imagine the wealth of the supreme lord in maintaining 16108 golden palaces we have a tough time just paying off the you know 2000 dollar whatever yeah <laughs> i'm talking about myself no? <laughs> so yeah krishna is maintaining everything and then in bhakti rasamrita sindhu shila rupa goswami gives an amazing calculation so everyone please remove your calculators we are in texas so texas instruments calculator <laughs> <laughs> i'm doing an advertisement for texas instruments so in the calculator if you see krishna gave charity of 13000 cows every single day wow right 13000 cows every day now wait a minute from each one of his palaces let that sink in <laughs> krishna gave 13000 cows and it's not that those cows were like you know crippled cows they were like well fed healthy milking cows mothers with calves gold horns gold hoof gold cloth on the on the back and it's also described on their gold horns they had bags full of gold coins that's the type of charity krishna would give coming to this krishna would give 13000 cows in charity from 16108 gold palaces every single day of he being the king If you do the math and Krishna was in Dwaraka for 100 years that comes to 7 and a half trillion cows of charity Krishna did that So when we feel proud that we have sponsored a Sunday feast <laughs> How much is the Sunday feast Mataji 151 right when we sponsor a Sunday feast of 151 dollars we get sad when our name is not announced <laughs> in front of krishna who gave so much charity seven and a half trillion cows and krishna knows the value of cows he played with cows all his life in vrindavan at the end of the day if you think about 
Every money, every bill that is there around this world ultimately belongs only to Krishna. Like for example, you just sign a, you sign a bill and you give it to someone, that person gives it to someone, that person gives it to someone, that person gives it to someone. The bills just keep going around. But ultimately when we all die, either it's going to be in the bank, inherited by our children, right? And ultimately even when they die, it just goes on from generation to generation. We come and go, the money remains here. Money remains here. One devotee was telling me, Grihastha, he was telling me, uh, he worked for 40 years in, in his life and then he got retired. And I asked him, Prabhuji, 40 years of work? He said, you know, 40 years of my life for only one reason. What is that reason? He said, transferring funds from my company's account to my account. He said, I lost 40 years of human life just transferring money from my company's account to my account every month. Very deep statement. Money is just going from one account to another, but our precious human life is lost. So at the end of the day, Lakshmi Sahasra Shata Sambrahma Sevyamanam Govindam Adi Purusham Tamaham Bhajami. Krishna is the Dravina. He is the Lord of all wealth. And Dhamma Bhi. Dham means strength. Think of Krishna's strength. As Kuruma, he can lift the whole Mandarachala on his back. As Anantashej, he can lift the whole universe on his head. As Varaha, he can lift the whole earth on the tip of his tusk. Vasati dashana shikhare dharani tava lagna. Shashini kalanka kalevani magna. Keshava dhrita sukara rupa jaya jagadisha hare. <laughs> How great is the Lord. And as Krishna, he lifts up Giriraj. <laughs> How powerful, how strong. Think about Balaram, Krishna's brother. He can drown the whole city by dragging it with the plow into the Ganga. He can threaten to break Yamuna into tributaries when she doesn't come in his presence. That's how strong Krishna and Balaram are. How powerful. Rukmini is saying all these qualities, calling out all these qualities and saying, Krishna, please use all of them to come and rescue me. And then finally she says, Atma Tulyam. Atma Tulyam means, as far as all these qualities are concerned, you equal only yourself. There's nobody who can equal you. There's a very nice verse in the Valmiki Ramayana, in the Yuddha Kanda, hmm? Yuddha Kanda, the, the place where Ram and Ravan are fighting. <clears throat> Please everyone repeat. This is a very beautiful verse. Valmiki Muni writes, Gaganam Gaganakaram Sagaram Sagaropama Rama Ravana Yor Yuddham Rama Ravana Yor Iva Valmiki Muni says, Gaganam Gaganakaram. What can you compare the sky to? The sky. Sagaram Sagaropama. What can you compare the depth of the ocean to? The depth of the ocean. Like you can say the pond is like the river. But you can say the river is like the sea. You can see the sea is like the ocean. But the ocean is like the ocean. Right? Gaganam Gaganakaram Sagaram Sagaropama Just like the sky can be compared only to the sky and the ocean can be compared only to the ocean. Rama Ravana Yor Yuddham Rama Ravana Yor Iva <laughs> The battle of Ram and Ravan can only be compared to the battle of Ram and Ravan. To my Guru Maharaj, once one devotee was asking a question and he said, he was saying something about Sri Ram, the, my God brother, he was asking a question to my Guru Maharaj and he said, Guru Maharaj, like for example, 
the, the, the opulence of Ram is his strength, right? And he was saying something and my Guru Maharaj immediately stopped him and said, no, the opulence of Ram is his beauty. It's not his strength. Although Ram is so powerful, his beauty completely eclipses his strength. Atma Tulya. In Chaitanya Bhagavat, there's a scene um, I was reading long time ago. It comes in the Adi Khanda, where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Nimai Pandit is sitting with his friends, students. And the sun has set its moonlit night and the moon is shining, reflecting on the waters of the Ganga and on the banks is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as Nimai Pandit sitting with all his students. And Vrindavan Das Thakur writes, it seemed like it was the moon sitting with its stars. And then he says in the next verse, wrong example. How can I compare Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to this moon with spots? Then he says, no, I'll correct myself. But he leaves it in Chaitanya Bhagavad. He doesn't strike it off so that we can see what was his first <laughs> example. He says, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sitting with his students reminds us of Krishna sitting with his friends, not on the banks of Ganga, but on the banks of Jamuna and honoring Prasadam with each other. He said, now that is a befitting example. If you want to compare Mahaprabhu, you have to compare Atma Tulyam with himself. So therefore, after saying all this, Rukmini Devi tells Krishna, Oh my dear Lord, if this is how wonderfully magnanimous, beautiful, strong, powerful aristocratic lineage, uh, young, wealthy, and unparalleled that you are. If you don't shower your mercy on me and free me from the clutches of my family, my Lord, I will die without you. Please use these qualities to help this devotee. Dear devotees, it's a very, very relevant prayer. Rukmini had five brothers and all have their names with Rukma. My Guru Maharaj says the word Rukma means fair complexioned. So probably they were all so fair complexioned that their names were also starting with Rukma. Like Bedera Pratigya Rakhi Bare Tare Rukma Barna Viprasuta Mahaprabhu Name Nadia Mataya Shange Bhai Avadhuta Emana Durmati Shangshar Vitare Pudiyaya Chinu Ami Their Mahaprabhu is called Rukma Varna, the fair complexion. So Rukmi, Rukmangada, Rukmini, etc. They all are fair complexioned. So the relevance of these prayers in our life is as follows. And this is the conclusion for today's discussion. Rukmini represents the Jiva. And the five brothers of Rukmini who all wanted Rukmini to get married to Shishupal are our five senses. Rukmini's father is intelligence. But intelligence, quite interesting. We see in this world, intelligence when sharpened, it controls the senses. But when the intelligence is weak, the senses control the intelligence. So Rukmini's father was old. So although he's intelligence, buddhi personified, but he was weak intelligence. So the five brothers of Rukmini are the five senses controlling the buddhi and dragging the soul to marry Maya Shishupal. But we all should pray like Rukmini. Oh dear Krishna, oh dear Kunj Bihari, oh Radha Kunj Bihari. We say these prayers in the mood of Rukmini that my senses and my intelligence are dragging me away to get me married off to the Shishupal-like material energy. You please come and rescue me and take me away by force. I can't come to you just like Rukmini was not asked to come to Krishna. 
but Krishna infiltrated through the army of Rukmini and saved her. We should pray. My Lord, I can't come to you, but you please break through on the power of my letter and come and rescue me. Now how that happens will be the discussion on the Sunday feast tomorrow. Gaur Premanande. Yeah.